Hello, it's Jess here from Sun Valley Trading Co, the Australian distributors for Cowboy Industrial Sewing Machines and Leather Machines. Today we're going to talk about the Cowboy Outlaw. Instructions on setting up your machine when you first receive it. So we've got this on a bit of a bench today, but you want to secure it to something pretty solid because with the hand motion that you use on the lever for your sewing, it needs to be quite secure otherwise you can get poor quality stitches if it's got a bit of wobble in it. So it comes with some bolts for you to bolt it down, just need to drill some holes into your bench or wherever you want to put it. So then to put the lever on, just bring it around. Onto this shaft at the end here has a keyway and there's a keyway in the handle so we just line them up slide it on and then tighten up this screw at the back then um, your machine that comes from me will have a patch of sample sewing in it um, which you'll want to remove to get sewing. Um, so it just has a bit of thread in it, so we can take that out. For your machine that has the thread tail in it, I do recommend that you pay attention to how it's been threaded, so you can thread it yourself. You can even leave the thread in there um, and tie your spool of thread onto this one and then pull it through that way so that you know that it's going in the right place. I will go through the threading pattern itself as well. So just doing, starting from set up here. This um, brake looking mechanism is what you use to lift the foot. So if we squeeze that, then the foot down here comes up. Please. So this is the thread stand that comes with the machine. So to put that together, these little screws, put that one through there, and then screw this on. So you will need some Allen keys for setup here. Five mil, three mil, and two mil, the most commonly used ones. And then, I usually pop a little washer in here, just because this will gouge into the base when you do up the screw. I do that so that it doesn't look bad when it's received, um, but you can do it whichever way you want. That goes on there like that, and then there's this hole here in the top, which we want to line, screw up with that. Now, it is a little bit tricky here, but you do want to keep the arm here in this sort of position because it's what guides the thread from the spool down to here and it sort of has to keep it on the right angle. So it can be a little bit tricky to tighten up the screw without it wanting to spin that around as well. The machine comes with six spare bobbins in 
a box of goodies, all the things that come. And this is your bobbin winder. So you can put this end into a uh, drill and then this end you can put the bobbin on. And then as it spins in your impact driver, as you run it, you can wind the bobbin that way. This ends into your cordless drill. Tighten it up. Yeah, an empty bobbin. So I've left the thread on the stand and going through this. I've just, um, usually for sewing, it's through the tension disc that way. But I've just pulled it out and wrapped it around the other side just to keep a bit of tension on the thread so it doesn't get all loose and wave around. Uh, then we put the tail of the thread through this little hole in the end of the bobbin and hang on to that. And there's a hole in this end too, which matches up with this little peggy bit here on the bobbin winder which is a locator so we slide that on there and we line up the hole with the locator and that holds it in place so then we can start winding Once you've got it wrapped on there enough, you can undo that so you're not having to hang on to it. And you can just adjust the angle ever so slightly as necessary to keep the thread going on in a smooth pattern so that it's filling the bobbin pretty evenly all the way along. And you just keep that going for as long as necessary to fill the bobbin to where you want it to be to go sewing. You don't want the bobbin to be overly full, like that the thread is bulging out the sides because then it won't fit inside the shuttle. But just a fairly full amount of thread on the bobbin will be fine. So to get it threaded up, now I'll roll the thread, pop it on there. Through this hole in the arm at the top. Then we want to go out through that hole. Weave it through here. Through that one and around here once and then keep coming back around. So I do that in a clockwise direction. I think the manual actually says to do it in an anti-clockwise direction, but my preference is to go clockwise because then if this is pulling on it, it's not loosening this by any chance. We do some more weaving through here. Keep that in the right place. Through the little eye in the take up weaver here. And then across through this tube here. And then we come down to the needle. So 
So first off, I will show you how to change the needle because this one that's in here isn't the right size to match the thread. So we need a two mil Allen key. On the side of the machine here, there's this hole here, which you can see into, and it's like a viewing hole. You can make sure that the top of the needle has actually hit like stop at the um, top of here. And then this one is the screw that clamps it. Just wanna loosen that off a little bit. And then we can pull it out. And then put our new needle back in. Remember when you're installing the needles that this long grooved side has to face directly to the left hand side of the machine so that this scarfed out side can be where the hook comes past to grab the loop of the thread. Bring this back up. Sure, we've got our groove side facing the right way. And then we tighten up the clamp. Oh, we make sure that it has actually pushed all the way up as far as it can go. And then tighten up the clamping screw. So then, to finish threading the needle, put the thread down through the foot first, and then you can push the foot up so you can actually get at the eye of the needle. And we put the thread through the needle from left to right. done then. To access the bobbin area there's this cap on the end which is just a matter of twisting it to the left to remove it. To pop out the bobbin case just press on this spring here. So we have our bobbin here. So we want it to go into the bobbin case so the thread is coming around and down through this slot and pops in there like that and then we push that back into its case and to get the bobbin thread to come up we hold on to this top tail of thread with using the lever bring it down so it does its rotation for a stitch, the hook grabs the thread and takes it around and picks up the bobbin thread so we can just pull it up there and then we'll bring it out here. The machine also comes with a roller edge guide and screws for attaching it. So this goes on the machine here, there's two holes drilled and tapped, threaded. It's just a five mil thread on the screws. And this just works by, this is a thumb screw. Slide it along the rails here to get the desired distance between your stitching and the edge, which will be your seam allowance. And then just tighten up the screw here. To start sewing, we use the uh, lever here to lift the foot, put our material in. 
And then one of the most important parts is to keep a hold of the threads to start with, just for the first two stitches or so. So then we can use the hand lever in a smooth but forceful sort of action to make the stitches. So this machine doesn't have a per se reverse function, but because it's all so manipulated, like you can control everything, you just lift the foot up, lift the presser foot to release the pressure on the material, and then just guide it so that the needle will come down one stitch backwards. do our reverse stitches that way so for tension adjustments on the thread um, to adjust the tension on the top thread there's these two springs here so to tighten the tension we screw them down turning the nut clockwise and to loosen the tension just do the reverse, turn it anti-clockwise. Um, and the bobbin tension is adjusted down here. So this one here is a locking screw on the actual tension adjustment screw. So we just loosen this one off a little bit just to release the pressure. And then we can adjust the tension on the thread with this screw here. So we turn it the same, anti-clockwise to loosen it and clockwise to tighten the tension on this bobbin thread. To adjust the length of the stitches we use this dial here. To shorten the stitches we turn it anti-clockwise and bring it out. Makes the stitches shorter. oiling your machine right, that you can drop some oil in a drop of oil just down just drop it in here just to lubricate the hook going around in there um, and some drops of oil in here on the presser foot and on the mechanism here and then if you take this back cover off there's these little screws and you'll be able to see the shaft and the rack then. So once we have the back cover removed, we can see where to oil here on the ends of the shaft on either end and on this shaft and along this rack at the back. Squirt a little bit down there and down here. The rack is on the opposite side of this bar here on the bottom part. Um, and putting this guard back on, you can see how it goes. These are hex screws. I try to just get them started and lined up before I tighten them all up. Also with your machine comes these spare parts, which probably the most common one that you will want is a spare grub screw for the needle clamp. 
if you lose that screw that we use to hold the needle in, there is two spares in this little bag that comes with the machine. Keeping it clean and oiled and being careful that you don't sew over anything too hard is the main thing. And if you have any questions, you can always get in touch with us. Thank you.